Hi everyone, my name is Dan. I'm a photographer, specialized in film photography. I wrote three books about the topic. But on this video, I'm going to be breaking down some scenes from TV shows and movies about film photography. So without further ado, let's get started. With The first scene we're going to look at is from the 1976 movie The Omen. It's a horror flick. So we see a photographer in a lab processing paper. And what he does is putting paper one side, removing it and putting it on the other side. That doesn't make any sense, honestly. You can do this, but it's not useful. Okay, so what does he do next? Now he takes the paper soaked with film developer, walks around in the lab contaminating everything. He puts it on other prints contaminating them also and he turns all the light that's bogus honestly paper development usually has four steps like uh, the development that reveals the image the stop bass to neutralize the developer the fixer that allows you your image to be stabilized and then you have to thoroughly wash the print but it doesn't fix anything, so the image would turn black in a matter of seconds. But if you stay until the end of this video, I'm going to tell you why they did that in this scene and how they did it. But from a photographic standpoint, this scene is it's totally bogus. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is from the movie Minamata with Johnny Depp. He's in a protest and we see him wielding a Minolta SRT-101. And later on, we see him wielding a Nikon F. So, uh, it was not uncommon back in the day to get uh, multiple cameras on an assignment, usually one with black and white film, and another one with color film, or a camera with a telephoto lens and another with a wide angle lens. What is surprising is uh, a Minolta and a Nikon. The lenses are not compatible, and when you go on an assignment like this, you try to take them as little equipment as you need, so you would get two similar cameras, two Minoltas or two Nikon Fs. Both cameras, Nikon F and uh, SRT, are totally legit. They were seen as uh, professional cameras back in the day, so yeah, that's legit, but unlikely, I would say. The next scene is about an anime show, Futurama, Season 7, Episode 4 from 2012. It's Bender with his film camera. Okay, uh, let's hear the reaction from uh, the, the accountant. Who uses film? We've had digital cameras for a thousand years. Yeah, we often hear about this. And how does Bender justify it? Digital? Puh. No digital camera can capture the warmth and grain of good old film. That's totally legit. We, we hear that all the time. But uh, Amy has a point. And where can you possibly get film developed nowadays? And Bender says, Right here. You're looking at the last chemical dark room in existence. Okay, so he has a lab in his belly. And we have the, we have the, sa the red safe light. And that's legit. And look, there is three trays, the developer, stop bed, and fixer. And when I first saw this scene in 2012, I, I was literally cracking up because the, the analog resurgence was not even a thing. People would say that film photography was uh, <laughs> dead and forgotten. So I guess one of the screenwriters in the show was a fond of film photography and that's pretty cool to see. And it's totally legit, even though it's a futuristic um, anime show. So yeah, that's, that's fun to see. The next one is from the movie Blow Up, 1966. And honestly, if you are a photography student, you probably saw this film at school. So we have the photographer in his lab and as you can see, the safe light is green. Why? I mean, Usually a safe light is red or orange, but back in the day you could use a fixed contrast paper and use a um, yellow-green uh, safe light. And see, it's more yellow, not green, but yeah, that's not out of the ordinary. Maybe they did that for filming purposes. Okay, using the wall to project the image to get a large print was usually done. You see, uh, lots of enlargers had um, a head that could be tilted just to do that, so it's totally legit. And then on this scene, we see uh, blow-ups of uh, his negatives, and you can see that there's not much of a detail, and the grain is very, very coarse. And that was to be expected when you were blowing up images from a 35 millimeter film. So, yeah, that scene is, uh, yeah, totally legit. The next scene is from a Stranger Thing. It's Jonathan taking pictures of Barb at the side of the pool. And my first reaction was, uh, why does he have a flash? I mean, if you want to take 
pictures in the dark and be stealthy using a flash is not really appropriate but he's not using the flash but why is he carrying it on it had some weight to the camera it moves the balance of the, the whole thing so it's but i think the screenwriters did that so people would see that he's using a camera and because it, it's in the dark let's uh up the brightness okay it seems like he's using a 135 telephoto lens and an aperture of 2.8 which is totally legit but the question is, is he able to get this? And the answer is yes, yes. Um, the action takes place in 1985 and back then we already had a high ISO film. Plus you could also push the film. Push processing is using a, like a 400 ISO film, preferably a Tri-X. They're very good for that. And exposing it like it's uh, 1600 to 3200 ISO and uh, developing to compensate um, the underexposure. So yeah, that uh, result, grainy image, very high contrast. It's totally legit. So yeah, Stranger Thing usually gets it right about film photography. So yeah, that's totally legit. The last one is uh, from one of my favorite movies, uh, Ghostbusters 2. We had the Ghostbusters in the lab and uh, yeah, they are using tree trays, which is uh, totally fine and totally legit. But what is he doing there? He's hanging up photographic paper soaked with chemicals right over the trays so he's cross-contaminating one drop of fixer into the developer and the developer is good for the trash that's not very scientific but that's not the worst part of it the worst part is this and that's total bs yeah i know it's the ghostbusters so maybe there's some magic involved or egan uh, invented a process to get uh, spirit photography or anything uh, but from a photography standpoint, uh, spontaneously combusting chemicals like this is total BS. I'm sorry, guys. I love this movie, but uh, no, it's not realistic at all. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Um, subscribe, leave a comment. And uh, if you like this video, you can watch my other video about the topic on the Stranger Thing lab theory and uh, if it's legit or not. Anyways, uh, that's all I've got for you today. As always, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Okay, so um, the omen, how did they do that? You see, back in the day for photography toning, like a, a black and white image or sepia, how do you do that? The process is detailed in my latest book, but anyways, this is how you did that. You had to take a black and white print and bleach it onto a bleach solution. And uh, the image became totally white. There was nothing onto the paper until you put it back into the toning solution. For sepia, it's Na2S or sodium sulfur, and it gets the sepia tones. But if you don't put it into Na2S, sodium sulfur, and decide to put it back onto film developer, the image comes back very quickly. So I guess this is what they did for a photography consultant onto the set who said, well, if you want to, uh, paper processing to be quick you have to do that and plus well when he takes it to um, the white light there's no need to fix it so um, the image would not turn black almost immediately so i guess that's what they did but doesn't doesn't change anything um, from a photography standpoint the scene on the omen is total bs anyway goodbye <laughs>